Call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Strand? Here. Gehrig? Here. Grinberg? Here. Pepcorn? Here. Mahoney? Here. What we're meeting today to meet about is the approval of the mayor's 2017 preliminary budget and set a public hearing date for September 26, 2016. And then uh, just to make you re understand, uh, according to North Dakota Code, we have to have our budget in by the 10th. That's why we're having a meeting tonight to try to get that finished. The budget team did meet and did talk about next year to change the schedule a little bit to perhaps give the commissioners more time to review the budget and or add modifications. And so we're going to probably move it up to give you a budget book in your hands a little bit sooner than we had this time. We would receive, file, and approve the 2017 budget <clears throat> when we come back to our next meeting after we have public hearing. We're establishing the maximum level of expenditures. Changes can be made, but they cannot exceed the total amount. So you could go down, but you can't go up. So new funding initiatives 2017. A variety of different departments came to us for different issues. The commissioners as well. I appreciate all your input and your discussions with me. Five new police officers. There is a COPS grant that may have eight more, but that more than likely, even if we get that grant, would usually be about four, but there could be that many more policemen on the street. Vehicles and equipment for the new police officers, police department's lease of a warehouse space. Uh, there's some warehouse space that's become available that's by our public works buildings, and it's a perfect place to put many of our police cars and have service in that area. Public health. In response to the opioid crisis, we are putting more people on this. Commissioner Strand's been working very diligently in this issue, and the public health team is as well. Uh, we do need to put more resources on this to address it as a citywide issue. Detox Shelter needed some assistance in changing in salaries and changes in positions, and they do a great job for the community. And uh, Tony Gr uh, Gehring's uh, group, the Sanford Hospital, has a transit route, so they're expecting us to put up in uh, run next year as well. Their hospital will be done in July of 17. Public Utilities, single sort recycling program is going to launch this fall. The landfill gas conversion to compressed natural gas is going on. And we also have the growth in regional water and wastewater services. You're well aware of the West Fargo, and there's some other areas that Utilities is working on as well. Appointment comp employee compensation, you did ask me at last meeting to try to gear that up, and the intent on this is, is to gear us to a January to January rate in which it will be part of the budget. So next year we'd come forth to you and say the budget for the our employees, this is what we're going to do in our competitive wage adjustment. It will be teed up in what we can afford and what our costs are. And we would do a, a, a change in July of next year just to start to tee that up. And then in January of next year, we'd know again what we're going to do. The other priorities of public art funding had been asked for. We're having a study done in that area as well. And there's a possibility of a contribution to the Greater Fargo-Moorhead Economic Development Corporation. So the budget challenges for this year, declining state aid revenue, $7.5 million, use of general fund balance in 2017, public safety staffing, public health concerns, competitive wages, capital improvements, infrastructure maintenance, and facilities management. The changes since the last presentation I gave you are on this slide, basically a decreased mill levy by two mills. Commissioners did request we look at that and see if we could do some changes. Some asked for more. Some asked, well, nobody asked for less, but we came to a two mil levy, which I felt most comfortable with. Increase in state aid, <clears throat> some of you felt maybe there would be more state aid than we thought, and we'll see what's going to happen. Kent just reported that sales tax revenue is up by 10%, was that this quarter? Or projected? The state legislature is for the biennium. Decrease the health care grants of 139,000, we found as we went over that. And then expenditure changes, uh, Mike and Bruce went with every department head and talked to them about a variety of different things and thought different ways we could change some things. So you see the, the bulk of those and what came out <coughs> once all those changes were made. We did change the police step uh, from 12 to 13, which you might know. And then the competitive market adjustment is for July, starting next July is 500000 the general fund projections, this is the overall sheet for you. Basically, you'll see all, all, all in, here's what's happening. Um, and it comes in the changes of what the initial budget 216 was, 17 proposed, and the changes that we've made in that. 
when you see the budget highlights, the expenditures, I think, again, the team did a great job of working on this quite some time. So initially, gen fund expenditure projections were uh, 94, uh, excuse me, 104 million, and we brought those back down to 95, 760. So the change is 1.69 overall for our, our general fund budget. The number of people that were requested were 24. We found uh, room for 14. And I think, John, you might argue that two of them are funded basically in public health, so it might be considered as 12. But uh, eventually those grants may wear out. We may have to pay for those. The general fund expect projections, and I think this is where we work very hard. This is operating. So it was 2, 000, 2, and it's docked down to 1,700. 1, so again, uh, uh, Bruce and Mike did a good job of working with all different department heads and worked on ways of bringing those expenses down. If you have specific questions on those, I'll open that up for questioning in just a minute. And then capital outlays, tremendous amount of drop on this where 10 million was requested and we're down to 3 million. So we really took a hard look at all these areas. And again, I have to thank the department heads for working with us to work and trim this down. And in many areas, I think we got this down to bare bones at this year. So overall, the citywide general budget is going to go up 1.65, and the general fund budget goes up 1.69. We have 14 new personnel. We have our capital requests that are to be met, and we have a reduction of capital expenses of 57.5%. Closing comments. The budget is balanced with modest use to fund balance. The mill levy reduction for property tax relief. Ongoing needs to fund the basic services for a growing city high quality infrastructure plans in place, flood risk mitigation projects ongoing, metro flood diversion project, and additional investments into public safety, public health, public utilities, and employee compensation. I'd open it for any questions to the budget team at this time. Commissioner? Fund balance then by uh, using some of that to balance the budget is still around 30 million, is that correct, Mayor? Their fund balance? Yes, there is uh, some use of fund balance in 2016 and some fund balance uh, use in 2017. The largest transfer is the transfer out of the revenue stabilization fund of 1.2 million, and then the rest would be coming out of the general fund. Um, but our, our, our general fund, fund balance has been very strong. It's in excess of 30%. I think the uh, year-end projection is at about 30.8 million, and uh, that's about 32% of our general fund expenditures with a long-standing practice of maintaining a 25% fund balance goal. And further, Kent, if you could just add the past five years, the kind of the rationale at the city with the state aid distribution funding and the spike because of the oil activity, has that predominantly been, you know, budgeted for one-time spending and and now we're maybe coming back to more normal use of state aid into the general operating budget? Yeah, I think that would be a good characterization. Um, as you recall, the public health building on uh, 13th Avenue South and 25th Street, the facility was uh, purchased for about $3 million and, and, and all in remodeled for about $12 million. And managing that spike in, in aid, we transferred a lot of that resource in cash to pay that so we didn't have to borrow uh, long term for that facility knowing full well that we would be staring down the next large facility which was the city hall so that was the strategy at that time to deploy a cash strategy and we pretty much transferred that over about a three to four year period as, as it started to spike we basically pushed it off into that capital project fund thank you so we, we were very cognizant of the fact that we felt that this was a spike or it was going to be a spike and it wasn't sustainable, and, and that was our strategy to try to prevent from fully loading that state aid spike into our operating budget. Any Mr. other questions? Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I, I have a Good question time. about the, the competitive wage adjustment, because we approved uh, a 2 percent. So is that included in here, and then there will be a s second one, or will that be next year? Is that how it will go? Because I, and I'm very much in favor of having the, the increase in the budget. Uh, so the 2% two, two is, is now, as we talked about, and then that'll go into July, and then you would add an additional 2% next July, and then for your next year, you would then always set your competitive market in the budget so that when we never have that anymore. It always go from January to January. 
Okay, I, and I'm, I'm still not 100%. Uh, maybe you, you can clarify that a little bit more, but I just, I'm in favor of having the, the increases in the budget. So that's not, I'm, a, I'm not opposed to that, but I'm just not 100% sure. Yeah. Bruce, could you, Bruce Krupp, could you explain that, please? Just why we went through that dialogue and what yeah, Commissioner, you're talking about the timing of that yep. occurring uh, yep. primarily. Uh, the reason that we included six months worth of the competitive wage adjustment in 2017 is because in July you just approved a competitive wage adjustment that takes you through the midpoint of 17. So to cover the full year, we plugged in six additional months and then we'd like to take it up on January 1st of the 2018 budget. Okay, thank you very much. But that will be a discussion in the budget talks like today, this year, like we did, yes. it would be then programmed into that. And I think as commissioners, you guys wanted that because then it puts your employees number one, you know what they're gonna do. And we're not waiting to see what the market does or anything, we just know what it is to do. The secondary issue on that, you said on the PPAC committee too, Commissioner Pepcorn, and we have a lot of employees that are feeling with the health insurance going on and such, they're a little pinched right yep. now. So. Yep. Commissioner Strand. M Mayor Mahoney, and, uh, I, I agree with that assessment. Commissioner Pepcorn, I'm, I believe our staff will be relieved to at least know we've uh, built into the, their, their compensation and benefits through the entire year, and it won't be a mid-year adjustment. I, I believe that's a, 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 st a sense of stability for, for our workers, and it's an important one. C uh, Kent, I have a question about the reserve balance, uh, ending fund balance, if you could just, just help me clarify that. The way I interpret this, we're going to have a 34 million 92,979 ending balance after the 2017 year. That's on page page 13. Maybe I'm missing yeah, something um, there. So some of that is in with regard to the uh, methodology of putting those schedules together. I believe the schedule, uh, excuse me, I better make sure I'm on the same page as you are. Uh, 13. Page 13. Yes, um, you're right with regard to the figure there. Um, as I quoted that 30.8 to Commissioner Grinberg's question just a few moments ago, there's really kind of two subsets that make up this fund balance total. There is what we call a revenue stabilization fund, which is currently about $3.2 million. And then there's also just the general fund, fund balance. And that makes up the difference there. And as we talk about what's remaining there's being monies pulled out of both of those funds, the revenue stabilization fund and the reserves um, in 2017 to, to balance out the budget. And so if you're questioning what, you know, what is the balance, I am. This, this is reflective of what the balance would be with those two subparts being your general fund balance plus what's left in the revenue stabilization fund. He's just confused because you said 30 million for Commissioner Grinberg and you, this says 34 million. I, I understand that, but it, it, for reporting and budgeting, it's really kind of two components. There's, there's the reserve and then there's the rainy day fund. And when you roll those two together, you get it to this 34 million. That, that if I might, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, so apples to apples, this formula though is consistent year to year. So last year it would have been 37 million and then you break it down to the budget stabilization and the general fund. Yes. And and the year before, that's the so the combined net fund balance ending balance then is 34 million. That's correct. And I, and I I would say, just for your sake of uh, understanding what's going on in that revenue stabilization fund, you pretty much just see that in your comprehensive annual audit and financial report at year end. It's 3.2 million dollars right now. And in 2016, we re recommended that, that we have a mid-year adjustment to pull 700,000 out of there. And then in 2017, we were talking about another 1.2 million. So the balance re remaining in the rainy day fund, what the revenue stabilization fund is, would be 1.3 million going into 2017. And our budget team wasn't real uh, enthusiastic about making that bigger reach into the revenue stabilization fund. But in light of the fact that the state aid was dropping so dramatically, so quickly, we felt it was prudent use of the fund balance and, and uh, 
the, you know, the dramatic uh, impact of reven revenue loss would trigger eligibility to draw money out of that fund. So we believe it's a prudent move. We certainly don't want to sustain pulling money out of the revenue stabilization fund if, if the state uh, revenues start to pick up and we start to see a little steam coming forward in a positive way, it would be prudent for us to restore what we took out or, or at least have a plan to replenish that from year to year because as you can tell, like right now is, is one of the first times where we've taken a, a larger uh, distribution from that fund than we've ever done in the past. So I think it's working as intended and, and our budget team is just very cautious about its use. Hey, John. I'll wait for other questions, uh, Mayor. Commissioner Gary. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, first, uh, there's a lot to, to like about some of the things in here. Um, I actually agree with using some of that fund. You know, those are tax dollars that have been collected, have been invested, and should be used uh, for the taxpayers. You know, we're not doing anything I don't think irresponsible with those dollars at all. Um, so, you know, having a larger uh, than needed reserve, I think, sends a wrong message not only to the residents but to the state uh, when they look at funding for us. So I agree with using it in a responsible way, which is what I think we're doing here. Um, some of the things in here, we're, you know, we're, we took, took a second look, uh, to came to the mayor and asked for some reductions in areas, at least I did, um, and we're still meeting our priorities and obligations, so that's another thing to like in here. The one thing I'm still concerned with is the amount of, of property tax increase. The average taxpayer is going to look at that letter that was sent to them and say my taxes are going up again, and they are. Um, so I would have liked to see a three mil reduction. Uh, I think it's doable with our budget here. I think it is responsible to do that, and that would still give us a 5% increase, which is a very strong increase in, in revenue from property taxes. So we've seen a 30% increase, 32, I think, believe, uh, increase in property tax revenue over the last uh, three years. That's dramatic. People feel that. That's real money coming out of real people's pockets. And I think it actually steals money out of our economy when we do those things. So that's one thing I hope we will continue to look, look at, but there are certainly things here to like. Any other comments? Mr. Strand? Mayor Mahoney, is, 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 to, is this meeting where we present any motions or is this just information sharing only? No, you do a motion to accept the preliminary. To the Mr. Garrett's issue is if you want to make any further reductions, you have that option. We'll have a public hearing on the 26th, which the public will get to weigh in, and then we do our final approval after that. If I might, Mayor Mahoney, um, I really, I really think that the budget is showing a, a level of constraint that the public will appreciate. I, I believe that uh, while Commissioner Gehrig is alluding to the realities of uh, increases in valuations, the good news in that is five plus percent of that is new tax rolls, new new properties, new commercial, and and then the rest is is residential. So there is about a seven percent increase. But also I know from what I've heard from the people that. There is some expectation of additional service with regards to especially uh, public safety, public health, and, and emergency preparedness and, 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 and infrastructure. So that's, there's a balance to be struck there. So that said, I am entirely on board for this budget as proposed for expenditures. What I would like to suggest, and I have a motion, um, I'll couch it in this and just a sense of floating it. Uh, and, and you'll all know in the end I will be voting for the budget that we present. But I, I believe we've all uh, done our due diligence with the budget team, with each other, with our portfolios. You know, um, in my instance, it's, it's, it's public health, public art, and, and, and the library and others. Uh, but I, there's one portfolio we all carry that is, is what I'd call the, the people we serve. And, and I don't, my sense from the people that we serve is there's a, a hope still for a, uh, as much relief as we can provide. And I, I say that in the, in the sense of not, not uh, deteriorating the budget as presented. I also am concerned, and maybe Commissioner Grin Grinberg has uh, input here, but as the state's going into another legislative session, we're going to have significant um, analysis and, and, and I'm not sure the right word is scrutiny, but they're going to give a serious look to budget reserves, ending balances across the state. So that said, I'm pre I'll present this emotion uh, tonight. 
I move that I move to provide taxpayers a total reduction of three mills instead of two as proposed in the 2017 preliminary budget, hence further drawing down the protect projected 2017 year end balance to 33 million six hundred and twenty seven thousand nine seventy nine from thirty four million ninety two thousand nine seventy nine. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Mayor Mahoney and commissioners, just so to explain my logic here uh, or my thinking, this doesn't cut or, or erode anything in the budget as presented. What it would do if you uh, uh, accede to this and support it is, is simply extend to the taxpayers uh, another 1.8% relief. So with three, three mills, we would be giving a, over 5%, 5.4% uh, roughly tax relief instead of 3.6%. And, and that's all it is, is to, uh, to, to I, in, in my opinion, and my one, the reality is the taxpayers have already paid for this reserve. So it's already their money. I, I believe we have enough cushion um, to, to do this without impairing uh, the budget in any way. I, I believe we have enough cushion going forward, and I think it would be a good message to, to put out. So that you come from the public schools, John, they're dropping, there's 12 mills. The county's dropping, there's four. Uh, the park district is dropping at 0.9, and we're working at two. So there's almost 18 mill levy reduction done, number one. Number two, I've talked to the six mayors across North Dakota, and they all are dropping into the reserve fund but you need to keep your reserve fund at a healthy amount if you can project what's gonna happen in the next 12 months. I'm very concerned about that. I think I'm a little uncomfortable. I've talked to a variety of people that are not sure what's gonna happen in the next year on revenues. So you can keep dipping down into your reserve fund, but your reserve fund at 25%, if you had 10 million, you continue to drop away and you have less in reserve in protection of the city. So it, it's not without great thought and diligence that the budget committee comes to you with the two mil reduction. We did, not, we did have the consideration because it was requested by one of the commissioners, but he also added 500,000 more into the budget theoretically because he thinks more state revenue is going to come. So it, it's nice to have it all ways, but you want to have your city protected and things you need done. I think the citizens understand that you have to balance that budget the best you can, and I think you're taking a risk at doing that, but uh, I can see what happens with motions. Any other discussion? I'll just add one thing, if that's okay. Um, it doesn't have to come all from the reserve fund. There are certainly things in here that I, that I would support removing. So we could find that happy balance uh, to do that. So whether you it's- cutting expenses 57%. I cut it even further than you requested. I think it's pretty hard to cut anything else. And if you start cutting services, tell me who you want fired, because that's where it's going to go. It's going to go into personnel. So if you guys keep pushing it, that's where we're going to head, is we're going to start, you want to tell me which, who do you want, a fireman gone? Do you want a policeman gone? This budget is not done without great thought and diligence, and it took a long time to get where we're done. And uh, I welcome you to come in on some of those department discussions when you keep telling me I can cut it more. Well, I'm going to resist, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'll resist the motion, and I, it's not that I don't appreciate Commissioner Strand's, you know, intent. You know, um, from my perspective, getting a full handle on the budget is, it's been a kind of a rapid course in, um, in micro-budgeting, I'd say, when I'm used to, you know, much broader budgeting at the state level. Um, but my concerns are dipping too far into the reserve fund without knowing the future. And so that would be my, you know, reluctance at this point because there's a number of issues facing our community yet. Uh, I run out of growth strategy and the more we grow, the more tax base we generate, um, we can apply towards our budgeting process. But I think any healthy city across the United States has a healthy reserve and these are benchmarks that we all strive to achieve. So uh, again, if we're all going to look into the crystal ball and try and predict what's going to be in front of us the next year. Um, I'll be the last to make a prediction to see what yours are um, because we were just talking earlier about oil prices. Um, they won't be back at a level anytime high for some time. Uh, I think this budget is very fair and balanced um, and there's been a lot of work that's gone into it and I appreciate the mayor's willingness to delay our action here tonight on preliminary budget by a week or so because I thought it was too rushed. You know, we were going to pass this preliminary budget on August 29th. And so moving forward, um, you know, having much more uh, time in front of us to, to, to look into the budget into the next year and then see what the legislature does, I think makes good sense. Um, and I'm particularly pleased that we've made strides in public safety. Uh, I think nobody can deny that. And, and so 
uh, being able to address that head on is, is, is was the first priority for me as a first um, term commissioner. Any other discussion? If Mayor, Mayor Marhoney and, uh, and I will qualify, I, I, I ex, ex appreciate sincerely the budgeting effort and the budget that has been presented and that we'll be voting on. I, I do. I'm, I'm just, uh, I've heard from the people too when I, when I met with them over and over and over again that they're looking for a message of uh, as much relief as we can possibly give them. And my only thoughts as I analyze this budget and look at it carefully and critically is that the only room we have is if we did this, it would be through the reserve account, reserve fund, ending fund balance. And it would be a gamble. Um, I also, though, think that um, it's a gamble worth throwing at the commission to consider or an option. And it's also uh, one that would affect maybe the uh, discussions about Fargo when the legislature starts meeting next year. The commissioner is trying to invest us worth nine dollars, and what happens with our public last time we had a me meeting in which this was discussed is people would rather have the city of Fargo have that investment in the city of Fargo to do what it has to do. So when you're talking about great relief, one mill every reduction more is just symbolic. It's not really going to drop their rate that much. So I, I again think that the prudence would be a better option, but I'll leave that to the vote. Mayor, one last comment then. When Gary. you put it together, so one mill now might seem like small, like small potatoes. But last year we did 2.25. This year, if we do three, that's 5.25. Then the year after that, the year after that, and we keep looking at it, and looking at it, it adds up to, to real dollars over time. I offered a 20% reduction, uh, and people said no. Besides Dave, uh, everyone else said no because it was too big. So whether it's too big, too small, it, it, well, you can call it symbolic if you want. The people do notice it in their pocketbooks because not everyone is as well off as, well off as some of us are. Uh, so I, th I think it's, it's more than symbolic. Roll call vote, please. Strand? Yes. Gehrig? Yes. Grinberg? No. Pepcorn? No. Mahoney? No. I have a motion for the mayor's preliminary budget. I so move. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Pepcorn? Aye. Grinberg? Aye. Strand? Yes. Gehrig? Yes. Mahoney? Yes. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.